Damn I'm it. already recording. All right, cool. All right, here we go. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Had deer in the headlights for a second there. <laughs> okay, here we go. Hello, everyone. This is Boss Rush After Dark, the alternative podcast show for Boss Rush for the Boss Rush Network. Let me do that again. <laughs> you all right there, Lorraine? Shut up, Corey. Shut up, Corey. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, here we go. Hello, everyone. This is Boss Rush After Dark, the alternative podcast show for the Boss Rush Network. I am your host, LeBron Dawkins, and with me tonight is the person we should just start calling Fangirl Number Ninety Nine. There's that's an inside joke, and there's a reason why we are saying it. <laughs> Good evening, Miss Stephanie Klimov. How are you? Good evening. I'm just having a fantastic night. <laughs> we know. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, yeah, we definitely know. <laughs> it's about a boy. Uh... <laughs> oh, my God. Stop it. You're embarrassing me. <laughs> All right. I, I mean, should we go? Should we go further? I, I mean, no, I know, no. We know. We know he's going to listen to this episode. We no, know he's he, not. <laughs> yes, he he's is. <laughs> no. <laughs> also, also with us tonight is that hey. master net twerker himself, Mr. Corey Deary. That's true. Hello, man. I am. I have the necklace right here to prove it. See, you can hear the jingles on the audio version because it's a great audio. It just shows somebody. You know, you know what you need to do. You need to put them on. You need to start twerking. And you know, the louder the twerk, mm. the the harder the audience knows that you that you're doing it. I mean, you're. Just, yep. No, dude. The way the way my body feels, if I try to do that, I would just fall over and cry for a little bit. Okay, it would just not end good. Hey, hey, your dis your dislocated extremity is is all better now, right? It is not. It hurts still. So what? <laughs> go go see a damn doctor, man. Nah, I got stuff to do. I don't have time for that. <laughs> this is Christ. I swear, I, I swear, man. With you, like you, you just never know. Sometimes let's see. It was a, it was a bad knee at one point. Um. Didn't you do something to your hip recently? <laughs> I mean, I when I was working at the car dealership, I my hip and my back were still twisted. Pretty yeah, bad. and now and now you got and now you got a lame toe. <laughs> yeah, it's my second one. Remember when I dropped that car door on my? Oh toe? yeah, yeah that yeah. Mm. So one on each foot your, now though. I'm surprised you didn't break your foot. <laughs> yeah, one on each foot now though, so we're even. <laughs> Uh, well, it's our favorite night of the week. How's everybody been so far? Wednesday nights are great. They're the best yeah. night of the week. Well, I and mean, I... oh, go ahead. go ahead. No, I was going to say, and, you know, I said in um, the Boss Rush podcast earlier that I, you know, finished a three hour hefty presentation at work. So I'm feeling I'm feeling good, which we are proud of you. Hey, proud of you. Thank you. We are proud Very of you proud. because you're because you are all sorts of nerves, and uh, you know, in the in the in the texts and the uh, in the Discord. <laughs> and I was a place. I was a mess. I was a hot mess. The, the, at least the, the Pax will keep you company. Yes, she did. She was sitting on my lap, to all, sitting on the keyboard, which made me very nervous. I don't want to put any weird things in the the, the <laughs> chat of, of the meeting. So. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. Um. So Wednesday, as they colloquial like to call it, is um is hump day. Um, so I really got to ask: do do we do a lot of humping on Wednesdays? Me personally, I I, I can't remember the last time I I, I humped anything on a, on a, on hump day. Oh well, I humped anything that wasn't myself, you know. I'll put it that way. Yeah, no, it's usually a hump free day for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hang out with you guys, so the humping is very limited. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because contrary to how we talk here on on After Dark, it is not that type of party. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> oh, I, I, I mean, I mean, we could, we could, <laughs> we could elevate the Patreon into an OnlyFans. I mean, we have both. <laughs> <laughs> there's After Dark, and then there's After After Dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, so um. So I mentioned I mentioned earlier before this show that um that I was having one of those weird ass days and it was because of the weather and uh, and and even my boyfriend knew something was off because uh because um normally normally uh well number one Wednesday is a Wednesday's a workout day so I'm usually up at like 
five something in the morning, get ready for a workout that happens at six thirty. Um, and then right after that, I have enough time to shower, get dressed, and I had to jet off straight to a um, to a to a to a weekly business meeting that that I attend from from eight thirty to roughly about ten thirty. You know, it's a networking thing actually. But today, it was raining, and it's still the middle of winter. So I'm out there in this fucking rain, in the cold. And even though, like, all I'm doing is literally walking from my house to the car and from and from the car to the actual meeting venue and all that stuff, it just really fucked with my mood <laughs> for for a good portion of the day. <laughs> and uh, and and my roommate knew something was off because usually usually on these mornings, usually I usually like send him the good morning text somewhere between eight and nine o'clock in the morning. He didn't get a good morning text till like eleven. <laughs> I didn't get one till like one thirty. And that wasn't even – that wait, wait. For, you're talking about for me, right? Because technically, because technically that wasn't even a good morning. That, that, was, that, was, that was just a check-in to make sure that we were still recording. Yeah, I know. Just, just You just needed something. So I'm, I'm I tell sorry. her on. I tell her on. I'm like, I, I'm just the fluffer, you know? He talks to me, and then his, and then his boyfriend texts him, and he's like, well, I got to go. <laughs> Peace. I'm like, oh. well, 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 luckily for you, I can hang out with you tonight because I already talked to him before we even recorded anything tonight. Wow. Oh, wow. That just that just sounded bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stephanie's like, what have y'all been doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. Somebody take the microphone away from me. <laughs> no, nope, too late. No, this makes for prime pr- premium content. Um, Premium but, uh, content. <laughs> but ultimately, you know, um, I don't know. I, you know, like we we probably don't say it as often as we would like, for, particularly for after dark. But like Wednesday is our favorite day of the week. It it really is. Um, and I I feel like even with because Wednesday is like a really loaded day. Like let's see, like I start I start well. I usually go to bed the night before, rendering. Uh, the, the newest episode of Crossroads. And then I get up in the morning, then some time between my workout, and me getting ready for the uh, for the actual show. I mean, not the actual show, the act, the business meeting I have to go to. Like I'm usually like uploading it to YouTube to get it ready and all that stuff, and starting to do the little the little the little write up for it. Oh, thank you very much, Corey, for changing the format of the write ups. But yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so so Wednesday is already a loaded day before I even start working and stuff like that. So yeah, like by the time we get to, by the time we get to this point in the evening, I'm just like yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just I popped on twitter real quick and this was the first thing that popped on i'm sending you the product page that just just came up on my twitter Ooh, i gotta see this i gotta see this what is it (laughs) what heidi akamatsu bunny version (laughs) oh my gosh it's everyone they're listening they're listening i know okay Katie Akamasu, who, who is she from? What, it's, what, it says Danganronpa, but it looks a little... Yeah, uh, Danganronpa uh, Volume 3. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, I mean, this is not the worst thing. Whoa, 300, $308? Yeah. Wow. Jesus. This is, I mean, this is what I was on Good Smile for earlier, but it's also that's also like 250 bucks. so... I guess the sexier it gets, the more expensive it gets. Is that that's usually how it goes? I guess, right? Yep. 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 That's exactly how it goes. Uh, anyways, I thought that would get a good laugh out of everybody. Oh, I got a nice chuckle. <laughs> hey, there's a, Zag- there's a there's a Zagreus uh, figure for that's bestseller. You know the you know the uh, the the video game character that made everybody bisexual. I was gonna say, isn't that kind of like maybe? I don't even know who that is. Instead of a wife, who is a husbando, the, right? The, the 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 lead character from Hades. Oh, I guess I don't know. <laughs> I I I, don't, I can't even picture him in my head right now, so I don't even know what that looks like. Okay, I was about to say, just just think it's the guy, it's the guy with the with the with the red tunic that he that you know. I mean, like I exposed. I have like a weird general idea of what it is but i also just don't i don't they're just not a hades person so i just 
All right, and Byleth is a is a fire emblem. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Like, if anyone in my immediate family wanted to get me that for like my birthday or something, that would be what I would want. But it's too expensive, so it won't be happening. Good lord, Tanjiro Kamado from uh, from Demon Slayers. This figurine is worth seven hundred and fifty one dollars. Yeah. Say what? Yeah. Mm-mm. Hmm. You why know, do, why what, does the, why does the why what does is the, the internet money? Uh, go, uh, go ahead. Why does the internet think I'm into all these like sexy anime figurines? I all I wanted to look it's at was that just, your, yeah your algorithm your algorithm because I clicked there. on the Byla statue one time now it's all fuck yes up. yeah you, yeah the, oh, hey, yo oh, hey one time's all it takes come on that's come on no. Come on, this come on. That this is a, this... statue isn't even isn't even a. It's, it's literally just the statue of the character. <laughs> you know, does the algorithm work? The algorithm works across various media's, right? Like if you yeah. look something on, yeah. Like were you looking up naughty video games when we did the topic naughty video games for the first episode of After uh, Dark? Probably, oh, yeah. I don't oh, remember. Yeah. I, this I know is, I this, was. This also popped up on my Twitter I, timeline. You know, you, you know, for me being an IT guy, I do not respect. I'm I'm money very stuff. concerned at what people are looking up in this house when I'm at work now. I'm very <laughs> well, upset. What makes thinking's in your house? You're the you're the only person. You're probably the only person on the internet history. Your your wife is dealing with two small ass babies all day, <laughs> which gives her more time to look up stuff on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> at Lear, at Lear Riza. I, I, I click on the buy list accessory one this time. This is pretty. Hold on, this is pretty cute. And then, like, I just, I just, uh, kind of moused over like the, the, uh, the, the, the product photos. And man, come on now, that that bikini bottom is like way up in her imagination. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There is no imagination whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Also, I want to like, I I understand people are like into this stuff, and more power to you. But who's brave enough to display this stuff in their house? Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You're asking that question. You're asking that question. I want to know. Come on, man. Yeah. You know, this is why I think. You know, I I saw I saw the funniest TikTok. Uh, it was basically about it was basically about men that have man caves. It's because. It's because their wives is like, he's going to bring all this shit in the house that I don't want anybody to see. So I'm going to give him one room that he can do anything in. And and that's where he can do it all. And that's basically where all this shit goes. <laughs> all right. Cool, I, I guess. I mean, I'm I just I'm just. Trust me, when you guys move and your, when your wife gets fed up with your collectibles and stuff, you will have a man cave. <laughs> I mean, I have all my collectibles out. They're all on this wall, and then there's some back there behind me. But so do you. So do you have any lewd statuettes? No, they're of, all uh, of anime or video game characters. No, they're all <laughs> Disney Infinity characters and amiibo, and I have like <laughs> the <laughs> the character with the least amount of clothes on is my Aloy statue I got with my collector's edition last year. And Aloy's and Aloy's pretty dressed. I know. <laughs> Oh, uh, I lied. My Kratos statue. Kratos just has like a towel, bath towel on. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, you don't have the you don't have the Gareth uh, the uh, the the bathtub the, um... Geralt. No, sorry. Yeah, that, it was too it was too expensive. <laughs> By the way, what's what's the most money you, you guys have spent on a collectible? Oh God, collectible. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, you know, like it can be anything from an from an amiibo because we because those are basically collectibles at this point now. Like m most people don't even use them for the fucking video games that they're fucking associated because with because they're now. not even associated with any video games anymore. They're just like, oh, <laughs> Kirby's coming out. I guess we could throw out the old Kirby ones again. We still got those, right? Yeah. We still got a fat penguin with a hammer. We can throw that out there. It's... I don't think I've really spend a lot of money on collectibles the only thing i can think of price tag wise is probably an amiibo i did buy a real ocarina at like a comic-con but mm -hmm. i don't remember how much i paid for it, and i highly doubt it was more expensive than an amiibo but i bought an ocarina so yeah. i have Good two i have two full-size gears of war lancers downstairs that were like 300 dollars a piece 
Oh hell, there you go. See. Well, I bought I bought one with Gears Two, the mm -hmm. regular one, and then I bought the Retro Lancer when Gears Three came out, and they are both downstairs. Mm -hmm. And now I'm trying desperately to get rid of them because I'm not a <laughs> I'm not a early twenties dude in his own apartment anymore. <laughs> Uh, okay, I didn't spend that much money on the collectible, but um, but I used to like you. Y'all remember the um, the anime uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion? Mm -hmm. yeah. I I went I went on the because like those are some of the I, I I love giant robot anime. I love it, you know. Um, so um, so like when that was a thing, like I loved the design of those of, of those mechs so much that I started going out and just buying them wherever I saw them. And we had a um, and in one of the malls before like you know like the before like malls started disappearing. There was a uh, there was basically it was basically like a like a like a collectibles shop, but it was mainly more anime centric and stuff like that, you know, Japan centric. Um, I walked in there one day, and they had they had every model, they had every model, on there, in the store, including the ones that had not been shown in the actual production of the anime itself. So like the ones that in the anime when you watch it, like oh this is the one that got destroyed, you know, in this episode that we never saw and stuff like that. They even had those, right? Guys, I spent over four hundred dollars, but I bought every single one of them. <laughs> and then, and then, and then the the guy was like, the guy was like, hey, like we've got one more coming in. Do you want to pre-order? I was like, fuck yeah, I want to pre-order it and stuff like that. <laughs> and true to form, true to form, like of course, like I'm a fucking big ass kid and everything. Those things didn't stay in there. Those things didn't stay in their original packaging at all. Because like, because like each one of them came with like different accessories, different appendages and stuff. You could, it, it had it had extra extra like 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 pieces and stuff so it could be battle damage. They had weapons and all that stuff. Like one of them had a big ass fucking samurai sword. There was no way I was keeping that shit in the packaging. I don't know where the fuck they're at now. Like I. <laughs> I've misplaced them. <laughs> See, that's cool. I would love to get like a nice replica of, of something. I think Corey had mentioned. I don't know if it was that expensive though. There was a a Sakurai. Was it from? Not Sakurai. From oh my gosh. Ghost of Tsushima. Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, but honestly, where I sp spend most money, like my biggest splurge on anything in the video game realm, is not you know um, stuff like that. It's it's the console between the xbox series x and the ps5 that's like where my money goes no more money left for a collectible you know you know some shit that i would actually spend some money on and this and this this speaks this speaks to me as an individual because as soon as i say it you guys are gonna be like oh of course i would love to get a replica a replica armor set from monster hunter basically like the borealis armor or something like that. And uh, if you guys don't, know, if you guys don't know what I'm what I'm talking about, like just um just uh just Google it. Uh, Monster Hunter. B o r e a l i s armor. Um, and, and it's actually yeah. There's a male and a female version of it. I'm actually more partial to the female version of the armor, <laughs> but the male armor is sick as shit too. So yeah. Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah, like, which one are you looking at? Are you looking at the men's version or the women's version? Women's one right now. Yo, isn't that shit hot? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that shit is hot. I I will wear that shit. You know, I I don't care. I don't care what what, what I'd be called. <laughs> Actually, I would I would uh I would butch it up just a little bit, but yeah, but oh, that's, that's nice. That's fucking hot to death. Hey, well, you know what? Like, I feel like that's where a collectible would really be justified. If there's a um, a series or franchise you're super passionate about, that's where you're gonna want to splurge. Like, I'll I will spend any amount of money on anything Zelda. Like, it's just you know how it is. And I don't know, Corey, if you would do the same for either Destiny or Halo, or am I just making that up? And I do do that for Destiny. I have they started putting out these eleven and twelve inch figure or statues that are like they're seventy dollars a piece, <laughs> but they have four of them right now, and I have all four of them sitting on my shelf over there. <laughs> uh, and one one was only out for like the Bungie thirtieth anniversary thing. They released a special edition of Cade, who is like a fan favorite character uh, in Destiny, who was killed in one of the expansions. But they brought him back for like a the thirtieth anniversary statue, and now they have a two hundred dollar version of these statues of the villain from the new expansion mm, and nice. uh i'm like my wife would murder me if i bought that but also i want it uh, 
So I have a bunch of I have a bunch of Destiny stuff. There's there's stuff that I would like if I wasn't married and didn't have kids, I would have bought it all. Mm-hmm. Like there's replica helmets and ghosts and there's like a like the go, there's a Alexa enabled Destiny ghost where it's basically like an Alexa pod but it also hooks up to your game and you can like switch out you can tell it to switch out your armor and your weapons and your uh loadouts and stuff to like match what you're doing in the game it's pretty cool actually oh sweet and they were on sale for like 10 bucks for so long because nobody was buying them and i Mm -hmm. almost bought one but i was like i don't really feel like doing the whole alexa thing Mm -hmm. (laughs) and like now now People are selling them on eBay for like two hundred bucks, and I'm like, oh, I should have just bought them to sell them. Apparently, I don't know. but that yeah. kind of stuff is a slippery slope. I'm trying to, I don't know why, just slow the inevitable with not having like a pers- like a digital personal assistant, like an Alexa. Mm-hmm. I think I just switched to Verizon, and one of their promotions was like, oh, you'll get a free Google Nest or something. And I don't know, maybe I'm starting to show my age, or like. They'll be listening to you. Well, probably, mm-hmm. you know, it's not really that reason, but I just. I, oh, I have two of those in my room. I have the I have the Nest, I have the Nest Mini, and I have the Nest Hub. <laughs> I'll have to get your opinion on what you think of the Nest later, actually, okay. because I think I might cave in and get one, but like, I don't know. Well, just... I'm one of those. I'm one of those people that I, that you know, like I I I I love the I love the idea of a smart home. You know, like, you know, like I, I'm, I'm living my Star Trek fantasy. There's, there's a reason why I mounted a big ass fucking television in my room so I can just stand in front of it like it's a fucking view screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like uh, like like uh, back when I used to have like, well, actually, I, did, I do have multiple monitors again. But back when I used to have like multiple monitors, like like I used to have a fucking command center. And and uh, and to show how much of a nerd I really I really was like I used to have like fucking like the. Like the Star Trek computer panels as the fucking as the fucking uh, like the desktop backgrounds and the screensaver. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, there there are aspects of the smart home that I, I find pretty cool. Um, I like the the security home aspect, but also I, I I went to someone's house and they had like it looked like a tablet that was embedded in the wall, so you uh-huh. could just be like blah 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 play this music and then the whole entire house will just like fill with music like i would love that and you want to know something super dorky about me just to go along with my whole zelda obsession is that in my wildest fantasies which i guess you know i don't think nikolai would mind at all actually is i would every time i'd walk inside my door that the home music in ocarina time like every time you walk into someone's home Mm -hmm. that's the home theme that would play when i walk in my house that would (laughs) I would be happy for the rest of my life. That's kind of cool, actually. Right? You have your own home theme song. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Uh... <laughs> anyway. No, like, you actually gave me an idea. Shit. <laughs> Good job. You gave Lauren an idea. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to steal your idea. I'm not going to use the Zelda music. Like, I I, I, I would have to... Fu- I have to figure what, would it, what would it matter if it was Zelda music? <laughs> Go right ahead. Well, no, He's no, no, going to no, find no. some Keep epic Monster you... Hunter ballad to exactly. play when he wants Exactly. Exactly. He's going to walk like... into his house in his armor and the music's going to start playing. And he's like, <laughs> gonna, like gonna, uh, what's it called? Uh, the, what's the, the main Monster Hunter theme song is called Proof of a Hero. Like, it, it, it's, it's, it's in every game. <laughs> <laughs> is it sad that I just, when you said that, I was like, I was thinking of the song, I need a hero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get us copyright. Stricken. I think. <laughs> Whew. Well, here's a quick shout out just to let you know that you are tuning in right now to Boss Rush After Dark, the new show from the Boss Rush Network, where every week we get together to, to discuss and debate topics uh, aimed towards our more adult audience. Uh, just know that Boss Rush After Dark is a no topic is off the table format, a forum. Yeah, uh, you can get the show early on patreon.com slash boss source network every Saturday or on YouTube podcast services and our w- or our website two weeks later for free. Uh, leave us a five star review on iTunes and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget that you can always find all of our content on our parent website, boss Oh, well, guys, I think it's time to talk about some things. There's been something that's been on my mind. Um, I kind of already shared it with you guys, but uh, but basically, I ran across this "Am I the Asshole" 
type posting. I don't even know where these are. Do these show up on tw- on Reddit? Where where do they show up at? I don't I don't know where they come from. I, I well, the one I stumbled upon was just when I was scrolling through my news feed and I just forgot where the source was. I think it was Reddit, but uh-huh. I don't know. All right. So basically, uh, this am I the asshole uh, that, that I that I think that I feel like we could probably talk about you know like get some good get some good conversation rolling with uh basically am i the asshole for yelling at my husband and telling him to get over himself after he threw away my tampon box okay so this is written in from a from a woman age 23 and her, uh describing her husband who was age 30 had been together for three years and married for two months uh and it's it goes like this so here's the thing I used to use pads for my periods, but recently was able to start using tampons. Uh, I have medical problems. Uh, basically, it's what she said. In comparison, tampons work 10 times better for me, especially when I'm outside, say like working or traveling. My husband, I'm not going to name names. My husband hates them. He never truly gave a reason other than to say he doesn't feel comfortable with me using them. I didn't think it was a big deal at first, uh, since he said he hates a lot of stuff <laughs> that I do, uh, that I do, but puts up with it, puts up in quotations uh, with it anyway, except for this. Uh, he asked that I go back to using pads, but I made clear that since it's my body, then I get to decide. All right, here's where it gets, here's where it gets crazy. He threw away some of the tampons he had access to, and I, and I was getting upset. But to keep the peace, I brought myself a new box and hid it away from him. He somehow found it and threw that one away. Uh, I didn't find out until I had my period yesterday and realized I had no tampons to use. I was tired and too stressed out, and I just yelled at him after he admitted throwing away the, throwing away the whole box. Uh, he argued that I already knew how he felt about this stuff, and yet I still decided to keep it around. I lost it, and I told him he had no right to do this, and told him to get over himself already. He stared at me for almost—he uh, stared at me almost about to tear up or something, then walked out. He later went on about how we, as a couple, should take each other's discomfort into consideration, and said he already tried to speak to me about those tampons. Yet I brushed him off and insulted him ver- and verbally abused him. He also said if I still insist on using them, then I should that I should do it while I'm outside the house. But I said it, that it won't happen. I feel bad for how it played out, but I just I was just at my wit's end and in so much pain that I lashed out. Did I go too far here? Does he have a valid point or not? I have words. I do. I do, too. So, you know what? I'll let you open. I'll let you go ahead and open it up. <laughs> As a human individual that has periods and utilizes feminine products, she... I think it's totally fine that, of what she's done. I mean, sure, it's never, in general, it's never ever good to lash out at a partner for any reason, but we're humans. And I feel like, oh my gosh, so many words. We're talking about her using feminine hygiene products. We're not even going to any any place extreme like fighting over women's rights about like something like abortion, where that's like a very extreme example of ethics. Mm-hmm. The the fact that she uses tampons or pads does not impact the husband in any way, shape, or form. He's like it. She uses it with, you know, in the privacy of her own bathroom. I do kind of wonder if there's something psychologically going on with the guy. Like, does he have an issue with an object? Not to use like vulgar hand gestures, like up her. Like, that's the only thing I could think of that he's having a problem with it, like that she has something inserted up there. But I guess now that I'm trying to talk myself down, the emotional aspect is the key part is that he never specified why he is uncomfortable with it. Like, there's the part she described. He is unable to elaborate as to why. And you know what? He he can't just throw it back in her face about being sensitive to his what makes him uncomfortable if he can't even explain why it makes him uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So I'll stop there. Like I honestly could keep. Oh, going. I'm like. Oh, I'm a full. I'm a full supporter of like open your mouth and use your fucking words here. Um, I don't. Uh, you know, there's a part of me as I was reading this, like I don't understand the fixation, but at the same time, I also don't. I also don't understand how. <sighs> He's. He, I have a funny feeling that he's one of these uneducated people when it comes to like like 
sex. And I don't just, I don't mean the sexual act. I mean, like, sex, you know, specifically. Because, I mean, you know, like, um, because anybody that, anybody that, you know, like, cohabitates with another person, especially another person of the opposite sex, knows there are certain things that they have or they have to do that is, that is outside the norm for what you have to do specifically and things like that. For women, it's when the, when it's their time of the month and they get on periods and stuff like that. They have certain things in place, you know. Like, I mean, I mean, you know, like what? He's not he's not uncomfortable with the fact that when she is on her period that, you know, like her hormones are out of balance and she might be a little more sensitive or crazy or whatever you know people people react differently to different stress and 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 bodily functions and all that stuff he's okay with her you know like having her ups and downs while she's on her period but he but he can't he can't tolerate the fact that she has to do something to like basically keep it all tidy you know i don't understand you know like has obvious is obvious no no older female in his life has ever told him like hey when you marry a woman this is what you're gonna have to deal with you know stuff like that i also feel like there's a a lack of maturity here from this guy especially the fact that he is a few years older than her you know i feel like that's in play too because she has already specified a couple of times like hey this is how i deal with things with my body and she and with the she doesn't say here specifically but i'm pretty sure she's given him like the please respect my wishes in my body speech as well what the fuck is he not getting about this? You know, because I guarantee you, if he turns around and says, hey, this is what I got going on. Could you please respect it? He would want her to fucking pay attention to it. So the same thing should apply. So what the fuck is up with this dude? You know, like. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, I understand they're a married couple. And when you're married, all your things are one. And I'm not the one to talk because guess what? I'm divorced. But but. I still believe, you know, there's just some sort of respect of people's belongings, you know, still yeah. individuals. And it bothers me, especially when she bought one privately so he doesn't know and, like, try to hide it. I know that sounds bad, but she's even trying to keep it out of sight, out of mind for him. And the fact that he found it didn't say anything and just threw it away. If that was me, I would probably rip his fucking face off. I would react way more than she did, actually. Because I'm like, what the fuck are you doing touching my shit? Sorry, what? I probably should not wake my son up. But, like, <laughs> seriously, don't touch my shit. Leave my fucking shit alone. I'm sorry. Yeah, the, and the other thing and the other thing that gets me, too, is the fact that apparently, apparently, like, she was at her wit's end enough to the fact that she lashed out on him, and he was ready to cry. Like, so I know right there there's some emo- emotional immaturity going on here. You know, like there's because because God, you know, it's like if he can't understand that what he did, you know, what he did is basically, par- uh, you know, paramount to like he was basically stealing shit out of her purse, you know, you know, like if he can't understand that, then he, they're in for a rough marriage. Yeah, that's also another thing. It's this kind of argument happened in the beginning of their marriage. And um yeah, they're three months in. They've been together. For, they've, they've been together for three years. I'm assuming, though, it says together for three, married for two months. So I'm hoping oh. that means together for three years, married for two months. Oh, I thought I read something about se- seven years, or am I totally making up that number in my head? It was oh, together for three. Okay, never mind. Yeah. You're right. Though. Yeah. See, it, it also kind of. I don't want to get off topic, but it kind of like isn't that kind of scary? You think you've been with someone that long enough, but there's this like weird, bizarre quirk that there's something that they can't put up with. And I know she says she's been using pads all this time and only recently started using tampons, but there must be some trait or belief system or something that this boyfriend, fiance, husband had that might signify that he might have a problem with this in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and also I, I, I look at, I look at the dating process, the dating process, the engagement process, that's basically that's basically like a job interview for the person you're going to spend spend the rest of your life with. And and just like how you're interviewing them, you should also be free and open to being interviewed yourself, you know, in the relationship so like that. You know, um because because you don't want to be a spouse and something is something gets, catches you completely out of left field, you know, that your that your that your that your other spouse is doing. You know, you don't you don't want that. At the same time, your your spouse, your other spouse, should not expect that shit from you, and you know things like that. You know, I don't know. I I I feel like I feel like they probably started living together maybe like a month or two before they got married. Because <laughs> yeah. there's because there's no way he couldn't have figured this out, you know, in three years time. <laughs> yeah, and I I don't want to give like a really stupid analogy, but this is how stupid I think it is. It's almost as if, you know, 
for example, guys can wear either tidy whities or boxers slash boxer briefs. And hey, all of a sudden the guy gets older and he now finds tidy whities more comfortable and suitable for his age or whatever. And the wife hates it and she starts throwing away all his tidy whities. Like, I'm sorry, it sounds like a stupid analogy, but same thing with pads and tampons where it's like, it doesn't have any re realistic, there's no real religious or ethical concerns to it. It's just a, a lifestyle thing something as simple as a guy's choice of underwear like I, it just blows my mind how an argument came about for that and i i just feel she's justified in her reaction i, I feel like i feel like the ultimate equalizer here for how she can get him to like get over her get over this shit is like it's like she turns around and says you know what if you don't want this shit around you and i are going to go talk to a doctor i'm going to get a hysterectomy and then you won't have to worry about this shit anymore because I won't have periods and I won't be able to have kids and, th and that's the whole process and function anyway. <laughs> Corey, you've been quiet even though you're shaking your head. I just, I didn't, I, this just baffles me. Like who, who cares? <laughs> I, I just, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just getting angry just thinking about it. I'm like, why, who cares? <laughs> like I, I don't, I mean, I don't even use any of these things. <laughs> You know, I mean, my 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 daughter seals them out of the cupboard and plasters them all over the wall because she thinks that they're giant stickers or giant band aids. And I'm like, oh, I guess technically, you know, in like, the grand actually, scheme of things, you're not wrong. <laughs> but like, she'll just like put them on the wall because they're sticky on one side. And I'm like, oh, um, Laurent, they didn't have any <laughs> indication of where this couple was located, right? No, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, like, oh, like. Where I found this, I kind of just like screenshotted it and then just 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 put it out there for us to like take a look at. Um, you, you know what? I'm glad you said. I'm glad you said the whole to ask the question. Who cares? Because I think really what I think really what what the heart of this whole issue is. I think she's. I think she's the one struggling with the fact that she's dancing around, not hurting his feelings. I think that's really what this is about. It's not. Yeah, the, the the tampons versus the tampons versus the pads thing. You know, like yeah, that's 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 the catalyst for it and stuff like that. But she but she brought her but she brought her and her husband's business uh, to to the internet yeah, I to just, do what to do what to do what women seem to always do, and that's always coddle their men. I just I just don't understand like why he has such a problem with with what she uses, right? Like that's just like. Who cares? Like, j let her take care of herself. Like, I, I, I... that's why I kind of asked about geography because, um, mm -hmm. I, it, like Laurent said, it must, I obviously it could be wrong, but it has to be some sort of like education issue because now, granted, this is, um, I think it was my mom or just some sort of person in, in that generation that told me as I was growing up, don't use tampons because. Like you won't if if you use tampons for the first time you won't be a virgin anymore like those stupid things, um, that are really myths and is not true. Mm -hmm. So like something tells me that he has that sort of uneducated mentality about how it affects her. Obviously she's not a virgin, but I'm like some kind of weird like religious teaching that just he like never got over or something. Whether it's religious or like oh, that's. My, my, my dick's the only thing that should be inside her. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Go dicks. Go dicks. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but it's the bottom line. Yeah, who cares? And yeah. Oh god. I, oh god. The let, wife let, should let, not. Let's hope he's not. Let's hope he's not one of those assholes that that never washes his ass because he thinks he thinks going up his butt crack is gay. God. But uh, yeah, it, it's unhealthy. It's an unhealthy start to the marriage if she needs to start hiding things from him, so especially, he does not get upset. Yeah, if she especially, has to hide stuff like that, what else is she gonna have to a hide? Hygiene product. Yeah, you know. Gosh, like it's God. like it's like if <laughs> if my wife preferred cinnamon toothpaste and I preferred wintergreen or whatever, and I could just kept throwing <laughs> away all the cinnamon toothpaste. <laughs> like, who cares? <laughs> who cares? I yeah. I don't I, think I don't think she's the asshole for yelling at no. him and telling him to get over himself. No. I don't I don't think so at all. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, she should be letting him know that he's the asshole for the fact that that he doesn't have enough enough forethought to think that she's taking care of herself for him. If anything, you know, like shit. 
if he can't, if, if he's, if he's, if he's that selfish that he can't realize that that part of this benefits him, there's no hope for his ass. Yeah, gosh, this guy sucks. God, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm almost afraid. Like, if she gets pregnant, is she gonna be afraid to tell him like right out? Yeah, what's gonna happen when, probably, she, when he finds out a baby's coming out of there? <laughs> exactly. I bet you he's the same kind of person that thinks it's not going to be the same once she has the baby, if you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. that level of intelligence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Spoilers, it is. It's it's the same. Good. Sorry. Glad to know that. <laughs> well, I kind of like this uh, are you an asshole topic because I have one that I've read recently and I kind of want to share it. So is that okay, Leron? Yeah, okay. let's do it. Go for it. We're all we're all friends here. Go assholes. Uh, <laughs> we love assholes and throwing them under the bus. <laughs> but instead of on a bus, we're on a plane. So this story Uh-oh. um is I, I don't have it in front of me, so I have it to add lip here. Sounds like it's going some places. <laughs> no, it's yeah. not. It really is it's not no. Um so there's a husband and wife and they're taking a twelve hour, thirteen hour plane ride. I think they were going to Japan. And they got they both had two, they had two economy plane tickets, and I guess when you're oh, about I think to, I've seen this one. I think I've heard of this. When you well, don't spoil it, Laura. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not because I don't know if you. I don't know I'm if you're intrigued. Going okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when it came time to board or whenever you check in, they were eligible for one upgrade to first class. And they asked the guy, like, I, and I forgot the specifics as to why it had to do with the guy, the husband, and the husband said, "Yeah, I'll take it." And the wife expresses to him like, oh, well, I want you to be next to me. I'm, you know, why wouldn't you want to sit sit next to me? And the guy's like, I'm not going to miss this opportunity to sit in first class. My wife can sit in economy while I'm in first class. And <laughs> left her ass in coach. <laughs> left her ass in coach. And he didn't understand why she was upset. <laughs> what is the big deal? It's He said, quote, it's just a 12-hour flight. Oh. I didn't realize the flight was that long. <laughs> yeah, like it's not just a three-hour thing like just a couple states over it's legit across the pacific ocean an international 12-hour flight and he (laughs) he did not understand why she was upset so the question is is the husband the asshole i feel like it's an obvious answer but let's just understand like the lack of self-awareness this person has all right Corey, you go first because stephanie and i talked the most about that last one (laughs) oh my gosh yeah he's an asshole like (laughs) hey if you're gonna if you're gonna take the upgrade you offer to your wife first first of all Second of all, if she wants to sit with you, then you sit with your wife. That's uh, that's that's not a like. Why is that even a question? You know, like I, I, I don't. He, he clearly thought that was not a big deal, and it's like I'm gonna. You know, why wouldn't I take this free upgrade? I mean, sadly, you I know, know I know people like that. That would they're like so they're so oblivious. Yeah, to the fact wow. that they don't they don't get why they just made the wrong choice. Yeah, I know people like that, and like, but like at the same time, it's like, well, I can only control what I think, I guess. But this is pretty. It's a pretty obvious answer, right? Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. you take the upgrade, you offer it to your wife, and if you don't, then you sit with your wife. Like that's not, mm-hmm. there's no third option. <laughs> Those are the mm-hmm. options, <laughs> you know, unless you like literally 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 doesn't care but then it's like well you should just do the right thing and not do it yeah do the right thing sit with your wife on a 12 hour flight it's 12 hours it's a long time (laughs) to be alone so just to spin this to get more conversation out of it put yourself in the wife's shoes and say your husband just did that what would you even be doing throughout those 12 hours because i would be fucking fuming and probably ruin the rest of the trip not intentionally but i just don't see a way out, like just walking away from it not <laughs> i'm i you know what I, I i usually keep a pretty cool head but i mean like i'm one of those people that i i'm pretty sure they they probably would they probably would have to turn the pl- they probably have to land the plane early and get my ass the fuck off of it <laughs> We have to make an emergency stop in Hawaii because uh, <laughs> that's the perfect place to drop my ass off to. <laughs> what are they going to throw you out into the middle of the Pacific Ocean? No, 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 I'm saying, no, I'm, no, I'm saying like if they like, if, yeah, like I would cause just that much ruckus that I would wind up leaving leaving my significant other in Hawaii 
I'd, I'd be left in Hawaii while they go travel wherever the fuck else they're going. Hey, you know what? Here's the sad part. There's this uh, person that I'm kind of dating now, and I'm like, you know what? I actually think he would do that. So I just send him a text of the scenario, and I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna give you guys the answer live. Oh my god! Oh, he wow, he better check that. I don't. I, I hate when women do this. Like they, they test. They, oh my god! It's like, well, is it a test? I just want to know. I'm genuinely curious. <laughs> now that I think about it, I'm like, oh, I wonder what he would do. I hope I hope he fucks with you. Like I hope he fucks with you and texts you back and be like, "Your ass is walking. <laughs> <laughs> You're swimming to Japan." <laughs> Wait, but um, so Corey, you said you know um, and it will around you too. Like you know people that have that kind of personality that would do it. Yeah, How well, do you understand their rationale. Is, sad part is they're dudes. It's always dudes. They're mm-hmm. fucking oblivious to. The, they're fucking oblivious to the facts, you know. I'm and and I don't know. Just like that last guy, like I think it's a maturity thing, you yeah. know. You know, like. Well, then flip the script. Do you think us females, for the most part, are too sensitive? Then. No, no, because here's here's what I'm. And thinking. that's not a test. It's okay to say yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Here's what I'm thinking. It's a it's a long ass fucking flight, right? Um, you both bought tickets to fly this flight together and stuff like that. You know, like all sorts of shit can go wrong. What if you're on a plane and there's fucking assholes who are, who are who are being dickheads about the fucking COVID restrictions and stuff like that. And here your ass is up in fucking first class while your wife is in coach, possibly dealing with somebody like that might fuck around and punch her in the face. Cause he's pissed off, you know, because he has to wear a fucking mask, you know, when certain lights come on and shit like that and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure like when it's just like, it's just like with rape victims, you, you always believe the victim. I feel like she's the victim here because she asked him if 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 he could stay with her on the flight because who knows what could go on and she would be by herself, you know, because you know shit gets crazy on planes sometimes. Shit, this plane may fall out of the sky and think that you're in one part of the plane and she's in the other and y'all are both gonna die. <laughs> shit like that, you know. I don't know. I think I'm I think I'm a pretty sensitive guy as far, you know, as far as like my feelings and stuff like that. You know, so yeah, if I got the offer if I got the offer to sit in first class, you know, versus my significant other and stuff like that, you know, like you damn you damn right I'm gonna be like, Hey, you wanna take this? And and if they say no, I'm probably gonna be like, you know what? Give it to somebody else. <laughs> Because I want to enjoy the rest of my vacation or my trip or whatever, and I don't want to, you know, and, and you know, that might sound selfish in itself, but, you know, I I've, I've found, like, the easiest way to, like, make sure that you get what you want is make sure people get what they want. Also, like, even if you, even if you, like, are trying to analyze the situation in, like, some kind of weird, logical way, would you want to trade 12 hours of being alone, enjoying yourself for, like, a week of of terrible like exactly yeah having your partner be pissed as shit you know exactly like i'm just trying to take like the emotions and everything out of it it's just like well would you i mean do you just want to spend 12 hours by your like enjoying yourself or would you rather spend a week enjoying yourself (laughs) right very good point that's a very good point so that's 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 yeah, that's an easy one. Um, by the way, I confirmed it. Yeah, there is an "Am I the asshole?" on on Reddit, and I'm like pulling it up now to see if there's maybe another one we can bang out because these are interesting. I might be scrolling through this for a while. <laughs> uh, here's one: Am I an asshole for not helping my partner with a new with our newborn? I'll, I'll truncate this because it's a long post, as most of them are. I know the title sounds bad, but I'm finding myself in a very difficult situation, and I'm genuinely not sure if I'm in the wrong here. I'm a 27 year old. Oh, M means male. Surgical resident. And my partner is a 27-year-old female who's a teacher, but currently a stay-at-home mom to our newborn child. They've been together for about seven years. Um, Looks like the baby was, you know, an oopsie. But we love each other. We did eventually want a family, so we decided to keep the child. Um, uh, She would take time off from work while I was completing my residency and take care of the kid. It's been three months since our kid was born now, and things have been rough to say the least. He's working a hundred hour, about 100 hours a week and constantly at the brink of exhaustion. Recently, my partner has been asking me to take care of our kid when I get home. Initially, I help without hesitation, blah, 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 blah. Um, but she's been asking for more and more of my time. Um, I haven't even had time to take off my shoes, and yet when I said just give me a second, she told me to hurry the fuck up. 
Uh, blah blah blah. So I'm, you know, summarizing. So, yeah. am I the asshole for not wanting to take on a larger parenting role during residency? Friends I've talked to seem split on the matter. Okay, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, a resident like you're technically still in medical school at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, like this is like this is your final step to becoming a full fledged doctor. I mean, you're technically you're already doctor entitled, but this is this is it. Like you know, like once you get past your residency, like you're you're a fucking doctor. And nobody can fuck with you except medical boards at this point, right? Yeah, and, and where residency you work, that's no exaggeration. Insane hours, and it's yeah. just very rough. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like hell week for the military. Mm -hmm. Except, except this hell we could be like four years long. Well, not that long. I'm exaggerating, but yeah. Like I've heard, I've heard some people are in residencies for a long fucking time. You know, yeah. depending on how specialized their their field is. This is a surgical resident. Mm -hmm. Shit. Okay, so I'm gonna weigh I'm gonna weigh one thing versus the other here. He's a surgical resident, which means that he really needs to focus on his on his career path. You know, like. <sighs> There's no, there's no bones about it. Like he's the breadwinner. Like I mean, honestly, you know, like in that type of field, like he's making the most money and stuff like that. And 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 I know people are thinking I'm gonna go like some sexist route here and stuff like that. But I feel like I feel like who who benefits the most if one person loses their job versus the other person keeps their job. I feel like the resident. I feel like the surgical the the surgeon is going to be the one that actually keeps everything afloat. Not saying that the teacher can't do it you know but i feel like if something goes wrong there's like fine there's like financial or professional or professional win professional windfall you know like and it's not just a sexist thing because we could easily have the roles reversed and have it be a male teacher and a female me medical resident so honestly exactly. it's not for me it's not a, a, a sex issue and not only that but there's more at stake when you're a resident again yeah. like Full value in teachers, but I'm like, when you're at a resident you have all the years in medical school you're like this close so if you fuck it up now you fuck up big time. And that was and that was the next point I was going to go to. Like he is a surgeon. He could easily he could easily kill somebody. He could easily maim somebody. He could easily like leave somebody in a state that they're not the same when they walk away from the surgery and stuff like that. So there's a lot more at stake here. Now, I'm going to flip it on her for a moment. Based off of some of the stuff he's describing, I feel like we're getting to a postpartum event. Because, you know, like, yeah, like, yeah, women do take the brunt of everything in child rearing. They carry the child, they give birth to the child, they raise the child. It's, 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 it's always uneven unless, unless, unless the dad's a stay at home person, you know, it's always uneven, you know, like women get more, women get more of it than men do as far when, when it comes to child, child rearing, stuff like that. But I feel like with, it sounds like they still have an infant. So it looks like we may be approaching a postpartum event. And I think that might be one thing to take into consideration, you know. Now, I really can't say who's in the right and who's in the wrong here, you know. Like, shit. Like, you know, there's so much at stake for both of these people. Like, shit. He may come home one day and she may murder the child because, like, she she can't function anymore, you know. So like that. I don't know. Like, I'm only getting his side of the story, but I'm, I am trying to weigh both sides of, 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 the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the coin here. Well, that's, that's a, a great question. That's even I consider a great answer because I'm not even sure either of them are an asshole, so to speak. I just think yeah. that's an unfortunate dynamic because being at home with a kid all the time, like even though she might know he's having a stressful in residency, all she could say is like, he's home. I can just have like a second. So I feel like there is a, a solution there, and that's to keep lines of communication open. She, mm -hmm. she Maybe she had a rough day, and that's why she just snapped and be like, hurry the fuck up. Like, I'm going to mm -hmm. lose my shit, which – Anyone who has kids, we've been there to points where we are about to lose our shit. So I feel like I don't think anyone is necessarily an asshole yet. I think these are natural emotions that both parties are experiencing. And as long as they sit down, have a conversation, maybe find a solution that they both can work through, then no one – then they can both walk out as a – well, I shouldn't call them winners. That's not the right word. Both walk out of this happy. Yeah. Hey, hey Dad, what are your thoughts? Yeah, Dad. I I can only speak to my experience, uh, but when I was working, especially towards the end. By the way, by the way, uh, your your son is adorable. Mm -hmm. He's all right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when I was working at the car dealership, and I was working like sixty, seventy, eight, and you know sometimes eighty hours a week, and then 
you know, trying to keep up with everything. Like, I, my, I, my wife has done like 99% of the work with <laughs> both kids. So maybe I'm not the best person to ask this, but. No, no, no. Um, actually, no, you are because like you, like, cause like you give an actual, you give an actual weight to like, I guess the, the surgical residents, like, you know, part of this conversation. Yeah. You do. You're but, actually living it just like just like Stephanie's a single mom. Like I got I got to take into account what she what she's saying. You know, I'm the person that has no kids right now. I'm I'm trying to navigate a relationship to see if I can get to a point where I could have kids. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but like at night, especially like it's really it's really hard, especially early on, because my kids are both breastfed and there's like nothing I can really do, you know, mm-hmm. except for like stay awake and stare at them, which is also really awkward to do. Uh, I mean, I, your, your, I should, kids, your I mean, kids are breastfed. So do they, so did they, did they reject like, like the actual like bottles? Like, you know, like you had the breast we, milk in the my bottles. My kids have never had bottles. Oh, wow. so, good for her. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, my son had a yeah, little bit. A trooper. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> My son had a little bit because there was like this lactose kind of, uh, he has a lactose intolerance to, uh, certain, like when my wife would eat cheese, like it would go through the breast milk and get to him and he would like, you know, so we had to buy all these special like groceries for my wife to, to eat. So like when she breastfed, it didn't transfer all that to Mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so there was, there was like a couple weeks where he was he had formula just until like everything kind of cleared out of my wife's system and we figured it out. Uh, but other than that, like my kids have never used a bottle. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I just had a really bad thought. Corey's going to come, Corey's going to come home. His six year old son's still on the nipple. Oh. <laughs> He's going to be like, no, these are mine. Get off. <laughs> I mean, I mean the way, the way he acts, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, but you know, like I, I, I haven't really done a great job of helping. But also, I don't know how to help when, like, when he wakes up at night for his, like, when it's time to eat. Like he, he doesn't really do that now. But like, he just wakes up every forty five minutes and then yeah. goes back to sleep. He wakes up long enough to <laughs> wake us up and then he goes back to sleep. Um. But. You know, like when when he was breastfeeding and stuff, it's like it's really hard to help because you can't really do that unless, you know, my wife would pump. But then, like, she didn't really do that all that much, really. And so, like, what what do you do? You know, Uh, Mm -hmm. I mean, in the morning, I like try to help them get ready and stuff how I can. But like, I always leave before my daughter goes to school and like she's getting. Like she's getting dressed as I'm walking out the door, you know, and when you, when you like are away from home working and stuff, like when I'm here, when I'm working from home now, or when, uh, I'm at home and my wife wants to go somewhere and like, yeah, I'll like take care of the kids. It's not like a question, you know, but I know like when I, when I go to work and I leave at 745 in the morning and I get home at, you know, anywhere between 6 10 and 6 30 right it's like it's really hard to help you know and and then you get to oh well we have to eat dinner so like i can't cook dinner because my wife's like we i eat as soon as i walk on the door because my wife cooks dinner because we have to get the kids ready for a bath and get them ready for bed and you know when you get home at 6 15 it's really hard to do anything like that and then mm-hmm. you know i give my I get my daughter ready for bed and my wife gets my son ready for bed. So there's that. But then like, you know, there's, there's really not a lot of wiggle room to help in other ways. You know, it's just, it's hard. Do what you can. Right. Yeah. And I know, I mean, I know my wife needs more help and I could probably do better in certain areas than I do. Right. But, um, it's also a lot of the reason why, like, I'm trying to keep recording all of our shows into, like, a condensed nights, you know, because I was recording something sometimes, like, five and six nights a week. Well, that doesn't do anybody any good, you know, in terms of helping. So now that that's kind of done, theoretically, mm-hmm. like, I can help 
earlier and longer at night if I need to, you know. So, but it's not like I was ever like an asshole about helping, you know. Right. It's just like I don't know where I can help and am I able to help and you know what's good for my wife and when does she need it and like I'm not always the best at noticing that kind of thing either but well and I also don't know if you you'd agree with this Corey but you know I think I read that the child is three was three months at the time of that posting that's a ve- like the first couple months as a first time parent your first kid it's fucking it's stressful overwhelming. Fuck. Mm-hmm. It, it'll get easier for them <laughs> yeah it'll yeah get easier. yeah um just side note, I got a response. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I said, if you are married, so I didn't say me. Like, I did not involve me in the conversation. I said, if you are married <laughs> and about to have a 12-hour flight, both of you have coach seats, but you get a free upgrade to first class, what would you do? His answer is, stay with my wife or let ho- her go to first class. Oh, he understood mm. the assignment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was his first test. I said, okay, it was just for the podcast. <laughs> he understood the assignment. <laughs> <laughs> This was the first test. Of many tests. There's many more to come. (laughs) He'll never, he never listens to these podcasts. Oh, 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 oh. He's going to start now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Now just says for the podcast, he's going to be like, so what episode does this one come out? When does this come out? I think, well, if you want to hear it sooner, you should subscribe to our Patreon. (laughs) True that. True. True. (laughs) What? For the low price of one buck, right? $1. One dollar. Did you mention dollar. that if he subscribes for a dollar, he doesn't get just one, not just two, but three shows early and potentially more when we start putting out more? Yeah. Yeah. He, he can listen to me fangirl about. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh. Stephanie, that was the funniest. Stephanie caught the, Stephanie caught the vapors tonight. Jeez. That was the funniest shit. <laughs> God. God. <laughs> Who's your favorite actor? We need to try yeah. to see if we can get him on, on, on Boss Rush. You know, I don't know if I'm one of those people that have, like, a, a very specific favorite actor, but if I were to, like, just pick the first name that came out of my head, it would be Robert Downey Jr. Okay. Not because of Iron Man. It just, I, lo- I love him as an actor in general. I, I tell you I tell you what, like, I'm, I'm going to be in the puddle on the floor if we ever get Mila Jovovich uh, on, mm-hmm. on the show. <laughs> I, awesome. I, I, I've, I've told people like she would be my husband I'd be the wife <laughs> <laughs> oh man good times yeah you know what I, I think this is uh I think this is a good uh good good enough time to go ahead and wrap it up no yeah you got you got a topic no you got a topic? I do not I'm tired no. my topic I like being difficult Laurent <laughs> come on oh Laurent that's a lesson about um well, I was about to call Corey a child. Like when you get when you get overtired, you get cranky. Oh, oh trust. Oh, I I know all about that. I know all about that, which is why I try to govern myself real quick. But it's like it's kind of like those Snickers commercials when you. Yeah. <laughs> you're not you when you're X Y Z like hungry, tired, horny. It doesn't. You're not you when you're like this. <laughs> oh. Oh boy. That you know what topic for a future episode like, like, well. What would you like? Where does your mind go when you're just super horny and you just cannot think logically? What somebody, crazy shit do you think of? Somebody put that. Somebody pinned that topic. <laughs> I definitely want to visit that. <laughs> All right. And on that note, <laughs> this has been Boss Rush After Dark, the alternative podcast of the flagship show for the Boss Rush Network. Uh, we'd like to thank you all for tuning in and listening to the show. Uh, for some reason, it. I thought that was your answer for being super horny. Where's your, <laughs> where does your mind go when it goes to Boss Rush After Dark? <laughs> I mean, I mean, let, let, let's think about this. We've had some sexy people on this show. We have, you know, so I mean, that's, it's not... It's, it's it's a compliment for sure. <laughs> Anyways, continue. Sorry, that was just the thought we went, that came. That's like I wasn't. I was only half paying attention. And that was where my. Uh, we want to be, give a big thanks to our to our patrons out there. We love you. Without without you, this show wouldn't be possible. At least the early edition of this show wouldn't be possible. Uh, but before we head out, like let's uh, let's go ahead and um, let everybody know where they can find us at. Uh, you know what, Corey? Since you're since you're kind of loopy right now, you go first. You can find me at I am Corey and HD on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me hosting the Boss Rush podcast 
uh, co-hosting Nintendo Power Block and find me with Stephanie on Standard Def for Disney and MCU with LaRon. And also Mark joins us on that show too. Yep. Yep, Stephanie. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Klimov, K-L-I-M-O-V underscore author. You can find um, various articles of mine, less so lately, uh, on BossRush.net. You, uh, as Corey mentioned, I'm on Standard Def, the Disney version, and on Boss Rush Podcast on Wednesday nights. All right. And um, as always, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Exodus803. Uh, it's also my Twitch and YouTube channels. Uh, come uh, come join me every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on twitch.tv slash Exodus803 for the Crossroads podcast where we talk about PlayStation and video gaming. And, uh, and yeah, like Corey said, uh, I'm on I'm a part of standard definition for the MCU. Like, hopefully we're going to break into some of the greater MCU stuff eventually. But, yeah, like... Uh, that's everything <laughs> like agents that I, of shield he hopes <laughs> hell yeah hell yeah i mean like hell i might even start watching those mcu uh the, the uh, netflix marvel stuff now might. I might i'm telling you daredevil season one is pretty good everybody keeps everybody keeps telling me that and i did watch a few of those episodes but we can say that for another time in a, in a different podcast uh everyone we want you to come back and join us for our next installment of boss Rush after dark where we'll be back to talk more topics that aren't completely content appropriate for our other anchor shows you're the best we love you and y'all have a good night take care bye